focused to something that's been making headlines for the past one, two days, and that's the National Electricity Plan from 2023 to 2032. And this is all, we're going to talk about all that we know so far. And this was on the back of the comments of the Union Minister, Sri Manohar Lal. Now, he spoke at a press conference recently and he said that the National Electricity Plan of 2023-32 has been finalized. And we have, obviously, Agam, Varsha and Anushi joining us to talk about it. A little bit about the plan. Well, the plan has been finalized for the central as well as the straight transmission systems. And it aims to meet the peak power demand of 458 gigawatts by 2032. Now, it's key to note that this uh, peak demand estimate is higher than the earlier 380 gigawatt estimate, which was calculated at a conservative 5.7% CAGAS per analyst. So a revision was actually necessary, is what analysts have to say. Now, the total project outlay stands at 9.15 lakh crore rupees, and it aims to not only meet the rising electricity demand, but also kind of it helps, it plans to help the integration of not only renewable energy, but also the green hydrogen loads that will be coming in, and to help integrate that into the national electricity grid. But Anushi, let me come to you. If you had to point out the key features that were mentioned by the union minister, what would you name? Absolutely, Mika. So there are some of the key features that stand out over here. Now, let's just start off with the transmission network, first of all. Um, currently, by FI24, and we are seeing about 4.85 lakh circuit kilometer, which is supposed to increase to about 6.48 uh, uh, circuit kilometer lakh. Um, again, the transformation capacity is also expected to rise from 1,251 GVA to about 2,342 GVA. And the transmission system, here, this is an interesting one, um, the capacity going almost doubling from 33.5 gigawatt to 66.75 gigawatt and the inter-regional transfer capacity increasing from 119 gigawatts to about 168 gigawatts by 2032 that we are looking at for these. So these are some of the key features that one should continue to look out for. You know, Varsha, we have also been talking about interstate transmission system as well. Can you tell us a little bit about what it is and, uh, you know, the kind of uh, well, evacuation approval uh, there is in terms of capacity? Yes, well, I'm on that, if you see, Union Minister has announced the approval of an additional, you know, 50 gigawatt for the interstate uh, transmission system, which connects high, vo uh, high voltage transmission lines across India for efficient electricity transfer, basically. And by 2030, the, uh, the country plans to evacuate 335 gigawatt of power through the ISTS with 280 gigawatt coming from renewable sources. Of this, if you know, 50 gigawatt has already been approved. And currently, you know, about uh, about transmission systems for 42 gigawatt is completed, 85 gigawatt is under construction, and 75 gigawatt is in the bidding process. So while the remaining uh, 82 gigawatt will be, you know, again, approved later on. Yeah. Of course, uh, you know, we must remember that maybe we can, we can take stock of what's already happened in the last 100 days. So, uh, you know, uh, firstly, the transmission schemes worth about 50.9 gigawatts uh, a capacity has been approved. And uh, moreover, when it comes to total estimated project, that can come to a little over 60,000 crores, 60,700 crores so, uh, nearly. Approved system includes offshore wind power, and this will be in the states uh, of uh, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu. And, uh, you know, the scheme will support power requirements from green hydrogen as well. That is That becomes a little bit more critical here. And schemes will help evacuate hydropower from JNK and thermal power from Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. Uh, and especially the evacuation of, uh, you know, thermal power projects always bodes well, considering what the government has in terms of their plans with respect to the push in renewable. But, uh, you know, Anushi, let's move on and talk about the key beneficiary of NEP, and that is power grid. Uh, of course. So when we are mentioning about the National Electricity Plan, Power Grid Corporation is something that we need to talk about as it is India's largest power transmission company and is continued to play a crucial role in strengthening the grid infra for the country as we speak. Um, it currently uh, transmits about 45% of India's power ne uh, needs and has ongoing works of about 1.14 lakh crore in hand. Um, estimated capex outlay also if you look at for power grid that stands at about 2.07 lakh crore and this is still 2032 that we are looking at. But uh, on to some of the brokerage counters also what their views are on this company. Firstly I'll come to Motilal Oswal's view. They remain 
remain bullish on this counter with a buy rating and a target price set at about 425 and noting a transmission opportunity of about 2 lakh crore for the company and again with the capex uh, and the cap uh, capex trends uh, uh, expected to pick up this is another beneficial move for the company as we speak going forward um, even if you look at goldman sachs view now they have uh, seen this views this nepa 2032 as a positive move for asset developers like power grid and maintains a buy rating on the counter as well with a target price of about 372 also, uh, other industrial factors play in uh, for the company as well with the higher government uh, transmission capex picking up for this, which will, which is expected to uh, help uh, power grid. And um, the company also benefits from some of the structural funding advantages and its core earnings as we speak. So this is the whole picture that we are looking for power grid corporation as we go. Thank you, Anushi. And But you know, while Power Grid is one of the biggest beneficiaries, being the largest transmission uh, company, we also have some other potential beneficiaries. Now, first one, we have Adani Green Energy. Now, this company is well positioned to capitalize on the National Electricity's plan, f which focuses on solar and wind as well. Also, Tata Power's renewable energy arm is also someone you can watch out for. NTPC, now, while this is... Um, it. A, th a power generation company it also has significant transmission and distribution assets. We also have equipment manufacturers like BHEL, which is the leading manufacturer of power equipment, as well as Siemens. Now, this German manufacturer has a strong presence in India's power sector and could benefit from the National Electricity's plan's focus on technology upgrades. But, you know, apart from the National Electricity plan, keeping the energy theme in mind, yeah. we also had the union minister give us some updates on the status of various other power generating assets. And the the yes. first one was energy storage, uh, specifically pump storage projects. Yeah, Agam, yeah. what did he say about that? So it's becoming a little bit more important in terms of uh, the way we actually store well energy. Uh, and this, in this case, for, for the uninitiated, when you consider something like the pump storage projects, uh, well, we are talking about hydroelectric power plants, which also have the capability to store energy that has been generated from that power plant. And it, this usually is uh, comes in handy when we need to meet power needs at peak hours when the demand is significantly higher. Now, uh, you know, as far as the union minister is concerned, he's made certain uh, comments here. And uh, he, he suggests that India PSP potential stands at more than 184 gigawatts. And uh, to add about 39 gigawatts of PSP capacity by 2030. So we're also looking at a significant addition, a potential addition as far as PSP is concerned. The current installed capacity is only 4.7 gigawatts, which means that is a huge, huge scope and ambition as well from the government point of view. About 6.74 gigawatts of PSP capacity is under construction and about 60 gigawatts uh, is under survey, which means the contracts for an additional 3.77 gigawatts uh, have now also been awarded. So all in all, it certainly is looking like uh, a lot of traction on ground has come through as far as PSP is concerned, that is pump storage projects. Uh, there are plenty of companies which are already you know, engaged in pump storage projects and naturally a lot of these hydropower majors, uh, which would include something like an NHPC, SJV and Adani Green, all of them are well in the fray at the moment. We also have Tata Power and GSW Energy. Spe specifically, NHPC has a capacity of a, a nearly 10,800 megawatts locked in. That comes to around 10.8 gigawatts to be precise. And for SJVN, we have about another 24 gigawatts of hydropower and PSU projects in the pipeline. So it is quite significant uh, when it comes to plans for PSP as well. And uh, also in terms of uh, key highlights uh, when it comes to government's uh, new NEP. And I think lastly, even though renewable energy has been a focus yeah. in, you know, have energy transition but the union minister also stated that ensuring energy security at the end of the day is also the goal and that's where thermal power always comes into play what were the updates that the minister said on the thermal power Varsha? well amiga on that as you rightly said ensuring energy security is also important so uh, ministry of power is prioritizing thermal capacity addition uh, to meet the peak demand as said by union minister now currently if you see the total thermal capacity from coal and lignite in india stands at around 217 gigawatt now capacity of 28 gigawatt is under construction out of which 
14 gigawatt of capacities to be commissioned during the current financial year. And furthermore, if you see 58 gigawatt of capacity is at various stages of planning and bidding, uh, informed the minister. Now, the power ministry has also awarded 12.8 gigawatt of new coal-based uh, thermal and uh, thermal capacity in the last 100 days. And if you if you talk about the companies engaged in thermal power, you have NTPC, you have Tata Power, you have Adani Power, Reliance Power, JSW Energy, and CES. All right. Well, um, Varsha, thanks for that. In fact, Varsha and Anushi, thank you for joining us in this conversation. Uh, very interesting new national electricity plan on the anvil and a lot to make for that.